Finally tonight, if you're watching us, you're not watching the Grammy Awards. One time Tufts student Tracy Chapman won several Grammys tonight, one naming her the best new artist of the year. The music business is changing. The initials LP have been replaced with CD. Marcus Jones reports on the end of an era. Have you been to the record store lately? If you haven't, you're in for a surprise. Those 12-inch vinyl albums you're used to seeing are becoming harder and harder to find. And it's all because of this little invention, the compact disc. Some say that maybe we're changing a little too fast. Well, it's inevitable. Too mm -hmm. fast. Um, too fast, perhaps, for some consumers. But um, I think the record companies are um, happy with the pace at which things are moving. The CD, with its distortion-free sound and remote control convenience, is gobbling up the market. Long-playing vinyl records are disappearing faster than anyone ever expected, putting the squeeze on music lovers to switch to the new technology or else. It's not that expensive to make a compact disc, and it's probably to their advantage to just concentrate on the CDs. Um, unfortunately, they, it doesn't seem like they're, they care very much about the consumers who still do have turntables, and a lot of people still do. At record stores in big cities like Boston's Tower Records, the largest store of its kind in the world, LPs are still readily available. But record companies aren't making it easy for stores to keep offering such variety. They're recalling lots of their titles. They are, you know, they're cutting them out, basically deleting lots of titles. And they're making it expensive for us to return things that don't sell. Hmm. So we can't really take chances anymore. We have to, whenever we order albums, we have to go really lightly. James Isaacs is a music critic as well as a DJ at WBUR-FM. He has already made the switch to compact disc. He has about 500 in his collection, but he still values his LPs, especially the covers. There's Bob Dylan in his full five feet three inches of glory there. Okay. Now here they have they say two records set on compact disc. Okay. Where's the rest of me? <laughs> Isaacs, who estimates his vinyl record collection is in the thirteen thousand range, does not resent having to make the switch to CDs. The sound, he says, is worth it. Watch. <laughs> Solo, piano solo. It's added a dimension. Which do you think sounds better? Well, for me, for my ears, I could hear every stroke of Billy Joe Jones's roll there. And this is, you know, excellent sound quality for vinyl, but. It's just not quite the same. I hate to say it, but I think uh, probably within five years, we're going to see very few titles available on album. Uh, probably greatest hits collections. <laughs> May, you know, I hate to think that they would stop pressing vinyl altogether, but it's a possibility within the next five years. The long playing album will only be 41 years old this year, and already it's headed for early retirement. Like drive-in movies and gas-guzzling cars, it's another casualty of progress. For the 10 o'clock news, I'm Marcus Jones. And that's our news. I'm Christopher Lydon. And I'm Carmen Fields. Good night.